The mm. basic argument of my presentation is that there should be more research on the social dimensions of Wikimapia, especially in face of the abundant literature on OSM and on other VGI projects. In this talk, I will present an analysis of the geographic distribution of objects in Wikimapia. Then I'll discuss the high diversity of Wikimapia's contents. Building on that, I'll suggest to think of Wikimapia as an arena of cartographic practices rather than a spatial database. And I'll conclude with an appeal for more research on this project. Now, what is Wikimapia? Wikimapia is a web to o mapping platform that was founded in Moscow back in 2006. It follows the general motto, let's describe the world. And the main data object to describe the world in Wikimapia is the place. And such a place is represented by a polygon of any size or shape and can be everything from a single house up to a whole region. These place objects can then be augmented by category assignments, textual descriptions, pictures or comments. And at the moment, it is fair to say that Wikimapia is one of the largest VGI projects with 2.5 million user accounts, although only a minority of those belongs to regular mappers, and more than 25 million places in the database. In theory, everybody can create a user account and start mapping. However, there are strong hierarchies implemented in the platform. There's a ranking system of users, which means that you have to map to earn experience points and then you'll be upgraded and get more privileges. For example, in the beginning, you're not even allowed to map roads. You can only map smaller polygons. So there are eight levels of regular, regular users. And at the top, there's a special case of advanced users who act as moderators, delete content, remove offensive comments, and they can also ban other users permanently from Wikimapia. So these advanced users act as strong gatekeepers in the community, and they often interfere if newcomers won't apply to their idea of what should or should not be mapped on Wikimapia. Since about 2007, the topic of user-generated cartography emerged in geographic literature under several keywords like VGI, Maps to O, Web Mapping to O, Neogeography, Wikification of GIS, and several more. And interestingly, Wikimapia was mentioned as a prime example by all of the agenda setting papers listed here, written by prominent authors such as Sarah Elwood, Jeremy Crampton, Georg Gartner, Michael Gutscheid, Mark Graham, or Daniel Sui. But surprisingly, almost no empirical research has been done on Wikimapia so far. To the best of my knowledge, there are at the time only three papers that deal directly with social aspects of Wikimapia. A very fresh publication of Ahmed Ahmouda and Hartwig Hochmeier on how place name changes in Libya are reflected in VGI. A paper by Andrea Balatore on forms on, of cartographic vandalism. And also my own paper on differences between OSM and Wikimapia in Jerusalem. During the last weeks, I've been trying to find out something about the geographic biases in the data of Wikimapia, because I always thought it would be very nice to have something like this map of OSM data, but for Wikimapia. Many of you have probably seen this great map, which was made by Mark Graham and Stefano de Sabata. It shows the differences in content density of OpenStreetMap, and it is a very strong visual proof of socioeconomic inequalities in the data. We have these glowing hotspots in Europe, in the US, in Japan, while large parts of the global south remain in darkness. And so I wondered, what would such a map of Wikimapia look like? And so I started wrestling with the API of Wikimapia, which I have to say is a very cumbersome enterprise. The API comes with a nice looking function called place.getbyarea for downloading all content within the extent of a bounding box or of a map tile. But you cannot simply download all objects from the database because the API has also some significant limitations. First, it passes a maximum number of 10,000 places per query. So if your bounding box contains more than that, you have to divide the box into smaller chunks and send a single query for each part. Second, the getbyarea function gives you only the ID, the name, and the geometry of the places. All the other information, like descriptions, comments, pictures, or the metadata, can only be accessed through another function, and you have to send a separate query for each single object. And here we get in trouble with a third limitation, because the API allows you only 100 queries per five minutes. 
If you exceed this limit, you'll receive an error message and have to wait for five minutes before you can go on. This means downloading all 25 million objects with all information would take almost two and a half years, which is actually longer than my current work contract. But for an overview of global density patterns, I found a nice workaround. For every map tile, you can just check the total number of objects without actually downloading them. So on zoom level 10, we have a grid of 1023 by 1023 tiles, which adds up to 1,046,529 queries. And with the help of an R script, I could finish this task in about one month. So this is the software stack I used. Wikimapia has an API that passes data in XML format. I wrote an R script to download and clear this data. And from here, I passed it along into a PostGIS database. And finally, I used uh, QGIS for visualization. And so I could create this map of object density in Wikimapia. And this result is really interesting, I think. It seems that Wikimapia comes with geographical biases which are somewhat different from those in OSM and also from the general TNOR in VGI literature. Europe is still one of the densest regions, but the focus is more to the east on Western Russia. Now this still makes sense to me since Wikimapia has been started in Moscow and the Russian speaking community is also the most active one in the forum. But what is going on in India, in Pakistan, in Indonesia or in Egypt? When I look at the OSM map I showed you before, I feel that it confirms many of my assumptions on how VGI is structured. But looking at this map makes me think that I really have no clue how to explain this pattern. And if I look at the micro level, I get even more confused because also the nature of content in the database is totally diverse. In Moscow, for example, but also in many other urban centers, the map looks very similar to OSM and follows the ground truth logic of topographic maps with a high degree of geometric accuracy. But Wikimapia is also full of many other epistemologies of map making, and I'll give you some examples. Many areas look more like this. So this is the city of Nablus in Palestine, and we see a lot of polygons with funny shapes which also often overlap. You also find loads of qualitative, subjective or personal content, like in this example with one of the best villages of Egypt. We have also many non-static objects on the map, like here a guy on a camel in chart. There's even an extra category for polygon art in Wikimapia. I found Hulk Hogan's beach house in Florida. And this example also draws attention to privacy implications of such personal information in the map. Wikimapia contains also cases of event mappings. There's, for example, a category for terrorist attacks. In the descriptions of many localities in Syria, you'll find crisis mapping-like protocols of events related to the ongoing civil war. We have also other forms of politically motivated mappings like an invented Edward Snowden square in a backyard in Dresden. There are also traces of very disturbing things in the data. Here we have a snapshot of the editing history of a synagogue in Budapest, which was temporarily described as a Cyclone B test area before finally someone else deleted this description. And as you have probably um, already learned from Sterling's and Doran's presentation this morning, there are fragments of geopolitical conflicts in the data, like this example on the name of the Kashmir region. And one last example I found very fascinating. Now, this is a neighborhood in Addis Abeba, and people started to add comments like, I grew up here, I like this place, and one person posted that he or she was adopted from an orphanage there and asked for assistance to find his or her birth mother. So, in face of this epistemological diversity of content, what the hell is Wikimapia? In the literature, it has sometimes been described as a crowdsourced gazetteer. 
But to me, it seems somewhat misleading to think of it as such a coherent project with a clear agenda. I would rather describe it as an arena or maybe a site where many different people perform many different cartographic practices. And these practices more or less happen to take place within the same platform. And as a result, Wikimapia data is not so much a well-organized or formalized data set for GIS applications, it is rather a huge and chaotic archive that allows us to study how people engage with maps and with spatial knowledge. And so I'm concluding with an incomplete list of open questions and with the appeal for more studies on Wikimapia to answer them. Adding to the issues of geopolitical conflicts and economic aspects that I assume were discussed earlier today by Sterling, Duran, Andrea and Jamal, I would say we know too less about social and geographic biases in both the data and the community. We know also little about hierarchies, gatekeepers or exclusion mechanisms in the community, or what motivates users to contribute to Wikimapia. What privacy implications does the platform have? To what extent do the different epistemological approaches coexist in Wikimapia, or to what extent are they contested between different users? And last but not least, what impact does Wikimapia unfold? Who uses it and for what purposes? So, thank you for watching this, and again, I apologize for the shabby sound quality of my laptop. For any questions or comments, I can only offer you to email me this time. And also, if anyone else is dealing with Wikimapia, I'd be very happy to get in contact. And now, enjoy the conference. Bye-bye.